We're going to look at our text at what we are going to be learning on today. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. Look in your Bibles as I read or look up on the screen. Look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Father, we do ask you once again to help us to learn what we need to learn. Keep our eyes and our ears open, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to fill this place with your spirit, Lord, that you would just help us to have a a fresh new filling of you. And I ask these things in your name. Amen. Please be seated. What's the best way to walk your life? This text shouts very clearly what it is as a young cocky lineman, there was a time that when, when you first start working anywhere you do, you're not too wise. And here I was, 22, 23 years old, and learned how to climb poles, not with a ladder, but with hooks on my feet. And so my partner and I had to go into this one backyard and uh, lower the cable, telephone cable, that was on the pole. And it was an old lead cable put up in 1952 or maybe the late 40s. And uh, it was only about 100 pair cables, so it's only about that round. But the span was about 600 feet. And... I can only begin to tell you how heavy lead cable is, even if it's only about that round, when it's a 600-foot span. Because you may look at, at the street out here or any of the alleys, and how they place telephone poles is just not, they just don't drill, they don't auger a hole in the ground and go boop. It's not like that. And those of you who are engineers, you'll, you know what I am talking about. Every pole is specifically placed, and the end pole, the pole on each end, there you'll often see a wire going into the ground. That's what keeps the other poles in the middle from going... There's a lot of tension on those wires. So here I was. My partner said, would you like for me to go up there? And I said, nope, I'll do it. I can do this. It's only a 100 pair cable, lead cable. And usually when you lowered cable, you had to take a hoist up there, attach it to the pole, hook it on to the cable, pull it out from the bolt that held it up, and lower it. You kind of, it's a chain hoist. I thought, I don't need the chain hoist. I can do this by myself. So he said, you sure? I said, yep, you bet. So I walk up the pole, I just shinny up the pole. And let me see where I can do this here. I don't want to hurt my head, but... So, if you can see this, this is the pole. So, I, I drill through the... Now, back in the old days, we drilled through the telephone pole by hand. Nowadays, linemen have, have these big drills to just go... Whoop. So, I got done drilling the hole. I put the new bolt in... And I'm getting ready to pull the cable off the old bolt and set it on my belt because I'm up there in hooks, belted in. So I'm ready to pull it off and set it right on my belt. No problem. And as soon as I took it off and rested it on my belt, I've got a hard hat on, and this cable was so heavy, my head went... And there I was like this. And my partner looks up and he says, Jimmy, you okay? I said, yeah, but I can't move. And my hooks are digging deeper into the pole. And I said, I can't get this cable off my belt. It's too heavy. And he just laughed. He just laughed because here I was, 
a young, I was in my early, early 20s, wise guy, cocky lineman. And I learned a hard lesson that day because he had to go get the hoist and walk up the other side of the pole and put the hoist on just so I could get loose. (laughs) Once again, as we have already learned, starting in chapter 4, Paul places a great concern on how we walk, on how we live, what our conduct is, okay? And once again, he brings this up, okay? Because at the beginning of chapter 5, very, very clearly he says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Then, then he goes into talking about sexual immorality, impurity, idolatry, crude joking, filthy talk, foolish talk. And, uh, and then he, he sternly warns, be sure of this, okay? Everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or is an idolater has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. So don't let anybody deceive you with their words and try and cover it up. And so they make you think that what they're doing is okay. Don't do that. He says in verse 7, therefore do not associate with them. He's talking to believers now. Remember, believers, as we learned at at the beginning of this book, who at one time hated each other. They hated each other, Jews and Gentiles. Okay? Very important that we remember this. And then he says, don't associate with them because, remember, remember when last week when I told you to put your sunglasses back on? Because these people are still in darkness. Don't expect unbelievers to think like you do. They don't. Sometimes when you, when, when you converse with them, you need to put, all of us need to put our sunglasses back on because that's, that's how we are able to once again put ourselves in their, in their shoes. Why? Because you were there once. You remember from chapter 2, at one time in your life, what were you? You were dead. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. And then he talks about the darkness and how we are children of light. So he says, walk that way. Take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Okay. And then in verse 15, he once again says, I can just imagine, you know, I think, I think Paul, and I'm going to ask him one day, I think Paul came from a, a section of, Chicago. Because just by the way he talks here, I can just imagine him saying, now, listen what I'm telling you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. So what's the best way to walk your life? The Bible calls a fool. Now, we, when, when we use that word fool, we we always uh, make think it to understand somebody who is stupid or or somebody does that does dumb things. But the Bible says that that a fool is somebody who says there is no God. You know what? Can I tell you something? We got a lot of fools walking around in this country right now and in our world. Okay, but that's what the that's the biblical definition of a fool. A fool says there is no God. They don't, they don't live it. They don't even think it. And it's very, very important that we remember that. So, on your notes there, what is the best way to walk your life? Number one, by making sure you use what you know. By making sure you use what you know. Why is that? 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ. And the point is why I put that reference up there is every believer has been made wise. 
every believer has been made wise. Okay? By making sure you use what you know. Every believer, through the, many, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, has been made wise. Do we stumble? You bet. Absolutely. But we need to make sure we use what we know. Many yards that my partner and I used to walk through back home is we'd have to walk through the person's yard to get to the pole. And the first thing, what do you think was the first thing we would look for every time we'd go up into the yard? A dog. Oh, you guys are good. Yep. A dog. A dog. And we'd always look in the yard to see if the dogs would leave their mark. You know? You know what? You know the bigger the mark means? The bigger the dog. You bet. But we found some really, really sneaky dogs sometimes because they would wait behind the garage. And then they'd hear us when we'd walk past because we're jingling with all our tools and our safety belt. You wouldn't hear them. So every time we would go up to a yard, my partner would shake the fence or I'd go, you know, try, uh, try, and, try and so we could hear them. But boy, I'll tell you what, we had some sneaky dogs. In fact, we were walking into one yard in a real bad section of town where it, it seemed like every house had a pit bull. And we walked into the yard and yelled out, Telephone man, we're here. And this lady lets out the pit bull. And we're yelling, No, 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 no. And she was just, she says, I don't care who he is. Bite him. Bite him. You know, and, 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 and my, my partner and I, we are just yelling, no, 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 ma'am, 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 phone company. But she just, she, she just let the dog out. I can't tell you how many, fo- how many fences I had to hop over real, real quickly. And when you're doing that with, with a safety belt on and all the tools and stuff, it is not easy. But many yards, when we'd walk through with all these dogs and the dogs would leave their marks, do you know that sometimes, sometimes, there were so many marks in the yard. You're like going, have you ever walked in yards like that? Hopefully it's not yours. Okay? You had to kind of go like this. And, and then over here. And then over here. Because usually our uh, climbing boots had those ruts in, in, in the soles. So if it got in there, it, it was really nasty. So here, we'd like go like this. And then he'd say... Jimmy, don't, don't go that way. So I said, okay. And you know what was the tough part? When the yard was full like that, and then there was a fresh snow. You know? And, and because then you couldn't see it. So every, oh well. <laughs> so, so you just keep, you would just keep walking. Can I tell you something? Look in the verse here. Verse 15. Look carefully, then, how you walk. He has, just, he has just gone through sexual immorality, idolatry, filthy talking. Don't associate with these people that, that do that. And he says, look carefully. See where you're going. Discern how you live. That's the word walk. I guess the title should be, what is the best way to live your life? I put walk in there specifically. It means how you live, how you conduct yourselves. And then he says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. That means being skillful. Okay? How you live. Now, before you get upset of what I'm going to say next, please hear me out. This does not mean that you are to be a theologian. This does not mean that you are to be a theology expert. He is concerned here how these people are living their daily lives. And many times within the church and within especially society, 
and I know there's teachers here, and I'm all for education. I start on my doctorate pretty soon. But let me tell you something. We are caught up sometimes with this. Are we to gain knowledge? Absolutely. We are to do our very best. But Paul is not, is not encouraging them to be a theologian here. Making the best use of what you know. Okay? You know the way that our society is now, or even the church. In most churches, you see very few doctors in church. You see very few lawyers in church. You see very few professors in church. I think I'm right. Because they've all gained much knowledge. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. But what's wrong with the church today? I think, in part, I think we haven't used all that we know. Especially conservative evangelical churches. Like this one. I think we got a, we've got a boatload of knowledge. But we haven't used it yet. It hasn't made its way from the head to the heart. It hasn't done that. The main concern here, okay, is not what people know, is how they walk, how they use what they know. Case in point, you look at most churches, when they're looking for a new pastor, what do they look for if they get a resume? First thing on the resume, what's his education? Nothing wrong with, with education. I'm still learning. It isn't, is he a godly man? How does, he, how, how does he treat his wife? Is he a good family man? Is he a good father to his kids? No, let's look how many degrees he has first. And then ask that question. Let me tell you. I may be going for my doctorate now, but there's a whole lot better pastors and a whole lot better believers and Christians better than me. The more I know, the more I don't know. Okay? I want you to, I, I want you to get this point. What's the best way to walk your life? By making sure you use what you know. Okay? Accurately examining your steps. And how are we supposed to walk? Here, let me give you this. Folly is joy to him who lacks sense, but a man of understanding walks straight ahead. Accurately examining your steps. Very, very important. And people say, well, how should I as a believer walk? I'm telling you, once again, look at at chapter 4. At the beginning, I urge you, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. How? Ladies and gentlemen, with all humility and gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain unity. Man, I'm telling you, it's all right there. How to walk? And then he just said at the beginning of chapter 5, and walk in love as Christ loved us. I love little Skyler up here singing like that. Man, I'm telling you, that's cool. It's okay. I, you know what? We all need to be excited about the Lord like that. And he knew the words. And what, was, what were the words? You have to talk to talk. You've got to walk the walk. And that's what he was singing. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yep. But by making sure you use what you know, accurately examining your steps, because a man of understanding in your, in, in your text there will examine their steps, seeing life from God's perspective. A fool's pride is in what they know. How foolish, here we go. How foolish we are as, as Believers depends on how much we believe God and how much we obey Him. 
Because whatever we go through life now, come on now, stay with me here. Whatever we go through life, there we have a chance to either trust in our own thinking or go by the Word of God and knowing that He is right there with us. But a fool's pride, people are foolish. People are foolish today because they say there is no God. The more people with more knowledge, that's, that, was my, that was my example. Society's big thinkers, you don't see them in church. They know too much. They think they do. But by making sure you use what you know. Very, very important. Number two, by making sure you don't waste time. In verse 16, he says, making the best use of time because the days are evil. What's the best way to walk your life? By making sure you don't waste time. Do you know, I didn't bring it up here because I, did not, I, I didn't want to thrust it right in front of your face here. Here, all you PC users. You know what is the biggest waste of time for me? My laptop computer. In fact, God is teaching me, even though it, it's a Mac. We love Macs, don't we, Don? <laughs> I find it to be a, a waste of time because it's so easy to sit there all day and look at nothing. It's like TV. So I purposely, God is teaching me to leave it here in my office. You probably didn't notice it, but I leave it here more often. I do. Because I find myself even sitting at home. Oh, who's on Facebook? Oh, it's okay. There's nothing sinful. But for me, it's starting to be a waste of time. I can, I can better use my time spending it with my family or talking with my wife or reading and studying. But it's very, very important be, by making sure you don't waste time. Why? 1 Peter 1.17 says, And if you call on Him as Father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear through the time of your exile. Can I tell you something? God knows what we've done with our time. He does. He knows exactly what we do with our time. I told you about one of my math teachers in the Chicago, in the Chicago Public School. She used to have so it right on the board there, um, up on the board. Time wasted can never be regained. Wonderful, wonderful saying. And where he says there to make, make use, it means to redeem, to buy up, take advantage of every opportunity. Can I tell? I shared with the people in our food pantry yesterday that, according to God's Word, we're in the last days. We are. And, and I firmly, firmly believe that from Scripture. We're in the last days. So we need to make use of our time and, and, and do God's work. And it doesn't, and it doesn't mean you've you got to fly all over the world. You know what? God's work is right at home. Right with your family. Okay? There's opportunities to serve at uh, church. But the day is coming. Mark my words. It's already happened within our world. The, day, the days are coming when the government is going to tell me what I can and what I cannot say. The day's coming. It's already there. In Canada, it's already there. Overseas, Scandinavia, you cannot preach against homosexuality or anything like that. The day's coming. Because we're going to a European style of government. Okay? Don't waste time. Please. By making sure you don't waste time. Why? Because God does know what we do with our time. Even through the tough times of life. Witnessing to, to the unsaved. Walk in wisdom toward uh, outsiders. Making the best use of time. When's the last person you ever talked to, an unbeliever, an outsider, and gave them your testimony? 
When's the last time you shared what you learned at a Sunday sermon? Hopefully you're learning something. When's the last time? Are you making best use of the time? Witnessing to the unsaved. And where he says evil, these are times of peril. Helping others to turn from darkness that they're in. We need wisdom to recognize and respond to evil. Number three, by making sure you're going the right way. By making sure you're going the right way. We have already learned the best way how to walk your life is make sure you are using what you know. Make sure you don't waste time. And number three, by making sure you are going the right way. Because so many times foolish people who say there is no God, would rather live their lives according to the way that they want to than according to the way God wants them to live. Okay? Many people do that. Many, many believers would rather live their life the way they want to than the way God wants them to live. And and you've heard my story. Do I want to live in Wichita or Derby? No. No. No, I want to go home. I do. I want to go home. The Lord says, uh-uh. No. No. You stay right where you're at. Many people, believers, think that they... Isn't it always like us who think that we know more than Him? You know? It happens in my life. And to understand in verse 17 there, he says, Therefore, because he just said, be careful how you walk, make use, make the best use of the time. Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. To understand is to comprehend it in your mind. Not trusting in human knowledge. Proverbs 12.15 says, The way of a fool is right in, in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Fools determine their own steps. Fools, the, remember what a fool is, the one who says there is no God. They rely on their own thinking. They don't want to do what the will of the Lord is. And a perfect example is trying to take your life in into your own hands instead of seeking the Lord's counsel and the counsel of godly others. I know all of you here were glued to your TV set Friday night. Right? You were glued to your TV set for Game 7 of the Hockey Stanley Cup Finals. No, I forget. This is Kansas. (laughs) Well, I was. And it was Pittsburgh against Detroit, same two teams that played for the championship last year. Detroit won last year. Pittsburgh last year had a player, wonderful, wonderful, great player. But they lost last year. And he wanted to win a championship. So you know what he did this year? He signed a contract with Detroit. Because he thought they had the best opportunity to win the championship. And the team he left beat him. So there he is, two years in a row, high and dry, with no championship. Why? Because he thought he knew better. He left Pittsburgh. They offered him a five-year deal, $70 million. He wanted to win a championship so bad, he signed with Detroit. One year, $7 million. Fool. The way of a fool is right in in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. When his whole team encouraged him to stay, he did not. Fools rely on their own thinking. By making sure you're going the right way, by trust, by not trusting in human knowledge, being what the Lord wants you to be. God's will, 
People, pe- you know what, people, time and time again, especially kids, especially teens, who say, you know what, I, re- I just don't know what the will of God is. Well, let me tell you, it's right here. How, how, we, uh, how are you supposed to walk? Well, I don't know. My Bible says humility, gentleness, patience, bearing one another in love. Walk as wise, not as the unwise. Wise, don't be a fool. I don't know. They're all, God's will, God's will is very, very clearly given in His Word. It's that's where it's found, and to, and for us to grow and walk obediently. But here's the thing: being in the will of God is the safest place to be. But the will of God could and sometimes includes suffering. It does. First Peter teaches that. Ain't no way that I thought that being in the will of God was for him to give Cheryl and I and our kids a severely handicapped daughter. That can't be the will of God. The doctors made too many mistakes. Yeah, it could be the will of God. You bet. It was God's will that my daughter be born like she did. And it can certainly be God's will to bring other people through suffering. It can. Where does it begin? Proverbs 1.7 the fear of the Lord. Man, that is so good. Is the beginning of wisdom. Man. So yes, being in God's will could, in fact, include suffering. My life did, and that's what helps us to grow. So here we go. Think of these things. What's the best way to walk your life? By making sure you use what you know. By making sure you don't waste time and by making sure you're going the right way. I read this the other day. Listen to this. Experience is what we get from doing things. Wisdom is what we get from doing them very badly. Think about that. So where does the Lord have you today? Are you walking your life the best way? As I pray here, right after I'm done praying, I want you to watch something. Because the will of God includes good times and it includes trials. Very much so. Because during the trial, during the suffering, that's when each and every one of us grows closer to Him. Some don't, because some make that choice. Others will get on their knees and follow the Lord. What about you? Are you in God's will? Are you walking your life the best way? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, once again, Your Word speaks with authority the ultimate authority about how and what is the best way to each and every one of us walks our life. Lord, help us to use what we know. Help us not to get caught up in, in so much knowledge that we forget to put it into use for your glory. Lord, help us to make use of the time that you have given to us Because, Lord, you know the days are evil. Oh, Lord, the days are evil. Oh, Lord, help us to stand up against the evil stuff that is going on within our country and within our world. Help us to be the light, children of light. And, Lord, help us to walk the right way in your will, not our own. Please. I ask you, Lord, 
to speak to each and every heart here. For those who have not come to know you as their Lord and Savior yet, though, Lord, speak to their hearts right now that they may know that they are sinners in need of a Savior. Oh, Lord, we love you. Speak to each and every one of our hearts, and we'll be thankful for it, Lord. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen.